Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as Paul said, my name's Les Round. I work for Spirit Circuits in the UK, and we manufacture PCBs, both FR4 and uh, metal pr printed circuit boards. And today I want to give a brief <coughs> presentation about PCB requirements for uh, solar cell and LED applications. Uh, we're seeing a, gro a growing demand for LED uh, products, and as Tony and Roland said earlier, uh, thermal management's a key element uh, in the success of uh, LEDs, especially for uh, high efficiencies and uh, longevity. So today, basically, we're looking at the PCB's role uh, in the thermal management of LEDs. And this is just a, a brief uh, chart showing a, a typical LED, and it's showing basically how the uh, life expectancy falls as the junction temperature increases. This is a similar, um, similar story with uh, CPV, solar cell technology. So we're looking at the PCBs from the uh, FR4 and MPCB uh, point of view. Um, and if we start with the FR4 route, um, they're split into both uh, single-sided, well, which is the most simple sort, and basically we're looking at now large copper tracks and copper areas uh, as low-level heat sinking. And this is typically acceptable for low-density, low-watt devices. And then if we look at the PTH uh, type of circuit, uh, we're now using the plated hole as the thermal conduits to uh, remove heat from the, away from the LED through the board onto the reverse side. And typically, typically they'll be uh, joining a ground plane to help dissipate the heat even further. Um, and this is suitable for higher watt products like one watt devices, uh, but still relatively low density. And this is a typical um, structure. As you can see, the, the red path is the thermal path taking the heat away from the component. I'll throw across the pad down the holes to the plane on the other side. And that's a typical footprint for a uh, thermal wire. Um, so now if you look at the MPCB route, uh, this is becoming more commonly used. Uh, it is a convenient packaging method because there's a built-in heat sink which is in close proximity to the heat source and there is a range of technologies as you can see oh, hold on. a range of technologies uh, which I'll discuss uh, in turn so if you look at the probably the most commonly used which is the standard uh, IMS product which is stands for insulated metal substrate um, this is probably the most popular uh, product and it consists of basically a copper foil bonded to a heat sink using a thin dielectric material. There's a wide range of these products available and they have a range of electrical and thermal performances. And basically that's what the structure looks like. It's just basically copper tracks uh, on a, isolated from a metal heat sink with a thin dielectric. So if you look at the uh, structure in more detail, we look at the copper foil initially, which is basically the circuit. Um, it comes in anything from one to 10 ounce. And typically we see two ounce as being the most common. And the increase in copper weight does actually uh, help with the efficiency of the thermal uh, properties. However, uh, as the copper weight increases, the costs also increase, so you have to uh, balance that uh, calculation. Uh, if we then look at the metal base, um, again, wide range of uh, available materials from sort of 0 0.5 up to 3.2 mils, uh, millimetres. These are standard products, these. I mean, there is other products available, but this is the standard range. Um, the most common is aluminium, mainly because of its light weight and uh, low cost. Um, however, if you do need uh, improved performance, you can get copper backed. Um, but copper is more expensive and it's heavy by comparison. Uh, but you can offset both those uh, items a little bit by using a thinner base material compared to aluminium. 
Um, if you look at now the dielectric, this is where you see the main differences from supplier to supplier. And again, coming in a range of uh, thicknesses from sort of 17 microns or as much up to uh, 300 microns. And they have uh, thermal conductivities of anywhere between sort of 0.25 and 3 watts per meter Kelvin. And they have a breakdown resistance of uh, sort of 500 to 1,000 volts for 25 microns. Um, so when we look at selecting a, a dielectric, um, I would imagine the first thing people do is pick the breakdown resistance because that's probably the safety element of the uh, component. So once you've established the isolation you require, then you pick the thermal properties that you, you need. And typically this is a balance between the thickness of the dielectric and the thermal conductivity. So if, for instance, you wanted to use a 50 micron uh, 1 watt per meter Kelvin product, but then thought you wanted to increase the safety margin, you could go for a 100 micron um, thickness and 2 watt per meter Kelvin uh, thermal conductivity, and you would have similar thermal performance. From a circuit point of view, uh, again, we are talking simple circuitry. Um, the heat generated this time is dissipated through the pad and through the dielectric as opposed to relying to go through holes. Um, and in, nowadays there is formable versions, so you can actually manufacture a panel flat and then bend it to shape later. And again, you can see now the thermal path is through the material this time, through the dielectric. And this is what you would see as a standard pad. And this allows you, as you can see, because you're now having to make room for wires, you can have much higher packing densities. If uh, density is not an issue, you can use the enhanced version, and all that's doing is just making it slightly more efficient. So you spread in um, heat along the pad, which is very thermally conductive, so uh, this just helps you with your thermals. Really, I'll put a slide up really for CPV, but um, similar thing for LED. Um, typically, two different materials are used copper and ceramic and the IMS which is what we're basically talking about today and this is a typical CPV cell setup uh, using a standard IMS material. I'd like to talk now about a new product um, which is a new generation IMS and the product is called Nanotherm. Uh, it differs from the standard IMS material in as much as the uh, ceramic now is actually deposited directly to the aluminium substrate. Um, it's, just, it's a thin ceramic material, 10 to 30 microns thick. Obviously the 10 micron thermally being better and uh, from an isolation point of view 30 microns gives you better isolation properties. The ceramic used uh, has a thermal conductivity of about 7 watt per meter Kelvin, so it's very thermally efficient. The copper is uh, applied using a uh, foil with a, a thin adhesive, four, four micro, uh, fourth hour, uh, sorry, four microns of adhesive, uh, and overall this will give you a, a very low thermal resistant uh, IMS material, so it's very thermally efficient. Uh, in the future, there will be a, an improvement on this product called Nanotherm Plus, and this is where the copper foil is plated directly to the substrate, to the ceramic layer. Uh, this gives you two benefits. One is uh, it lets you have chip on board technology, so it allows you to have compete with uh, the ceramic tile market, but because it's on an aluminium base, it does allow you to use quite a large format compared to currently available on uh, brittle uh, tiles. Uh, the other advantage it gives is that you can now use thin copper plate which allows you in turn to create fine lines, say 7500 micron lines. And this then gives you much higher packing density for LEDs, so for high density applications. And the next three slides basically are just a little bit more information about the nanotherm in particular. This one is basically explaining uh, what the material is. As I said before, it's a 7 watt per meter Kelvin ceramic layer. Uh, this is some of the applications showing the chip on board approach and the high density applications. 
and then these are some of the uh, benefits that you get, which is cost saving, uh, high packing density, high yields. Then another technology that we offer is uh, chip on board uh, type uh, uh, technology. Uh, this, is, this differs from uh, standard IMS, where this time we selectively remove the dielectric from the positions of the heat source. So in other words, where the heat slug for the LED is, we remove the, the dielectric. The advantage being now, the heat source actually sits directly onto the heat sink itself. So it's extremely thermally efficient. Uh, we create these apertures by either milling, so it's physically removed, or by using a bespoke bonding process. And this shows you the tip difference between the two, really. One, obviously, the bond did gives you a much lower profile, so it's much easier to assemble with. Uh, the milled version gives you a slightly deeper recess, but both these technologies are currently being used by our customers. And as you can see, the thermal path now is straight through the solder into the uh, heat sink. So these are very thermally efficient. Bear in mind, solder is a uh, thermally conductive, it's about 58 watt per meter Kelvin. So it's a very efficient uh, way of dissipating heat. And again, the main, main thing is, is for high density, high power LEDs. Uh, we also offer metal core PCBs. Uh, just by the very name, it implies what the product is. It's basically where the heat sink is bonded inside the material. So we have basically two copper foils and then we bond those to uh, uh, aluminium or copper core using uh, ceramic loaded prepregs. So in other words, you have basically a, a double-sided IMS material. Uh, we then enhance the performance by creating through-hole connections. This is simply done by pre-machining the core. We then use a filler to fill and then bond, uh, bond the foils. The advantage now is obviously you can connect uh, the two sides together electrically. So as an example, as you can see, LED one side, you can have components on the other. That could be drivers, could be um, dimmers, uh, Wi-Fi connections, that type of thing. And I've also included another technology we offer, which is basically via him in pad. And this is where we basically enhance the performance locally. And that's just by drilling plated holes into the heat slug and depth drilling into the copper core or aluminium core, and then we plate. And again, what we're doing is we're creating a, a much more efficient thermal path. Um, and then we offer uh, hybrid type PCBs. Uh, this is basically uh, using a PTH or a multi-layer PCB uh, using either standard FR4 dielectrics or, or ceramic loaded prepregs and materials. And then this board then is bonded to a heat sink using a ceramic loaded prepreg. Uh, this utilises the thermal vias, so the component is mounted on the component side obviously. Uh, the heat generated then is dissipated down the plated holes and also the ceramic loaded prepreg and then through the prepreg interface to the uh, metal base and this is what you what you would get so in this example it's got a mosfet <coughs> sits on a pad where the plated vise are and then the heat's dissipated down both the copper and the ceramic uh, prepreg this is commonly, currently used mostly for power supplies. However, it can be used for uh, enhanced uh, uh, LED applications. So basically, that I've given you a brief explanation of some of the technologies we offer for uh, LED, thermal management of LEDs. Um, I think it's important to consult the uh, manufacturers, the PCB manufacturers, because they're willing to help uh, design some of these features in so you always pick the most cost effective option and similarly because these materials tend to be more expensive especially the metal clad PCBs um, they are limited to size panel size so therefore again the fabricators can help 
uh, ensure you get best utilisation of the materials. We are running a workshop today um, where we'll be able to show and demonstrate some of these uh, technologies as well as give some cost down uh, information for uh, PCBs. Thank you. I said I'd be brief. <laughs>